Hey guys, Nurse Mike here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Before we get today's lecture started, please remember, click here to check out our brand new app-based NCLEX product, loaded with the highest quality NCLEX style practice questions and complete with detailed video rationales that break down the question for you. So finally master all those darn select all that apply questions. Plus, all our NCLEX memberships come included with our entire library of over a thousand videos and study guides and cheat sheets. Come see why over a hundred thousand students have trusted their future to simplenursing.com. Click here to get started for free. Parkinson's drugs. We have Carbidopa and Levodopa. Guys, this is the number one drug to know for the neurosection, mentioned heavily in all the question banks. So to simplify this immensely, before diving into this drug, let's recap the pathophysiology real quick. So Parkinson's disease, we have low dopamine and high acetylcholine with the formation of abnormal protein clusters called Lewy bodies in the brain. This results in clients getting jittery movements like muscle tremors, muscle rigidity, and a lot of slow start and stop motions like a shuffling gait and even pin rolling of the fingers and other unsteady movements. These movements are known as bradykinesia. So the memory trick we use for Parkinson's, just think of a park in Parkinson's. Technically, there's no dope allowed in the park, like no drugs kind of allowed in the park. So there's no dopamine in Parkinson's. And for the signs and symptoms, it's kind of like parking a car with Parkinson's for the first time. So a lot of jittery movements, starting and stopping motions, like you're pushing the brake, in brachykinesia for bradykinesia. So just think, if you have low dopamine, this means low movement. And more dopa means more movement. That's why we say you can't jump rope if you don't got dope. Or you can think, you want to jump rope? Well, you need to get more dope. So we give levodopa, which leaves the dopamine inside the brain. And carbidopa, which prevents the breakdown of levodopa allowing the body to use it more. So just say to yourself, carbidopa conserves more dopamine, and levodopa leaves more dopamine in the brain. Now, the HESI mentioned two things about levodopa. It's the main drug for Parkinson's treatment, and it's a dopamine precursor. Now, for adverse effects, we get hallucinations, known as psychosis, as well as orthostatic hypotension, that dizziness upon standing, resulting in falls. So we have to teach our patients those slow position changes. Now, as far as administration, we started a low dose to prevent those big adverse effects. And since prolonged use can lead to toxicity, we have to start slow. Now, the first sign of toxicity is dyskinesia, which is spontaneous or involuntary movement, kind of like tics. So just think to yourself, if we got too much dopamine, we have too much movement here. So we get face or eyelid twitching, even tongue protrusions, and face grimacing. We have to report this to the HCP since it's not normal. Typically, it means that the patient is toxic. Now for the key points for patient teaching. This drug has a slow onset, typically taking two to six weeks to become fully effective. So typically, this is true for any type of drug that's acting on the brain. It starts slow. And the second thing is slow position changes from that orthostatic hypotension. And the last point here is red and brown urine, sweat, and saliva is completely normal. So discoloration is normal. Huge NCLEX tip there. This is completely normal and doesn't need to be reported to the HCP or provider. Now for the big no-nos that are not normal here. Big one to write down is no high protein meals. That's the biggest NCLEX tip. So protein interferes with the absorption of levodopa. So just think, if you're on levodopa and carbidopa, you have to leave the protein with levodopa and just carb it up with carbidopa. Now, the second point here is not elimination of tremors or rigidity. We're only decreasing this. Big NCLEX tip. So as a general test strategy, no drugs acting on neurotransmitters in the brain, or even hormones for that matter, will ever 100% cure the patient. 
So these typically are lifelong drugs. So be very careful with words like cure or eliminate. They usually indicate that this drug will 100% resolve the disease, which it does not. Now, lastly, we never stop abruptly. This could cause a crisis where you have complete loss of movement. So remember, if the drug takes a few weeks to kick in, well, then it takes a few weeks to taper off too. Now, here's an interesting side note to switch gears. MAOIs in combination with this drug actually enhance the effectiveness. So the HESI mentions two things. MAOIs, the antidepressant, enhances efficacy, basically effectiveness. And selegiline, an MAOI, is used in adjunct treatment with carbidopa and levodopa. Now, the last point here is how do you evaluate the medication effectiveness? Or basically, how do we know the medication is working for the patient? Again, just think here. If you can jump rope, then you got enough dope. So the key word is improvement in spontaneous movement. This indicates that it's effective for bradykinesia. And Kaplan mentioned carbidopa and levodopa. Medication is effective when the family member says, my husband can walk around the yard. And the second thing they mentioned was effectiveness. The client is more ambulatory, or basically meaning they can walk around. Now, lastly, don't let the NCLEX trick you. This medication does not help with memory. Typically, that's denazepil for Alzheimer's patients, but we'll cover that in a moment. So again, to drive home the key points, the two biggest NCLEX tips to know for your exams for levodopa and carbidopa. Remember, leave the protein with levodopa since protein can block absorption, and you can't jump rope if you got no dope. So remember, more dopamine equals more improvement with movement. Now for anti Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.